you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Does everyone have coffee? Ready to go? We've got two presenters and a group visiting this morning, so we've got a full agenda we want to get started. First of all, for the guests, welcome to One Million Cups. And One Million Cups, for those who are not familiar, is a program of the Kauffman Foundation specifically to support entrepreneurship and to build community. Um, we have two presenters today who are going to tell us their story and then allow us to give our feedback and impressions Q&A afterwards. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the sponsors, certainly first and foremost, Alexandria Realty for letting us use their gorgeous new space. Um, our coffee from Muddy Dog, paid for by NC Idea. Soto IP, Uplift Now, we support not only on the day out, but in the recruiting aspect to keep our pipeline filled. Dating Kinky, Legacy Family Services, who do the email for us each week. Samadhi Solutions does our scheduling in the background. Imperative Product Operations sponsors our cue ball, which hopefully will get connected to this system very soon. <laughs> I'm working on that one. Global Training Initiative, Randy in the, yeah, in the NC State, um, they are the kind sponsors of our media equipment. Thanks for the tripods. Um, and in the background, we have two business marketing coaches working with presenters on the decks to make sure that they have the information that we need each week and that uh, we have a consistent presentation, ideally for everyone on a weekly basis. So thanks to uh, Nancy and Terry for doing that in the background. And then last but certainly not least, new uh, Network for Entrepreneurs in Wilmington, represented by Jim Roberts, as everyone knows, um, helping to support and pull forward our entrepreneurial cousins down south. Cousins, yeah. Yeah, okay. right? Neighbors. Yeah, our neighbors, cousins. yes. Um, we have a very special group uh, with us today. They, um, this particular group has joined us probably for the last three, if not four years, not necessarily specific from Belarus, but as part of the State Department, uh, a young professional exchange program uh, specifically for entrepreneurs. Uh, this morning we have 10 individuals from Belarus, and those who do not speak English are sitting in the, the back, but we welcome all of you uh, as well. Um, Nina, if you would like to come up and just give a few words, that would be great. Hi, morning to everyone. My name is Nina. We are a group of 10 gorgeous women. Yeah. <laughs> um, Raise you, let everybody know who you are, yeah. right? There we are. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we came to North Carolina within the program of USAID. Uh, internship for three weeks. Actually, we came with Hurricane, um, but it's now gone. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, <laughs> no damage. Exciting, huh? Only us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, what we do here? We are here to learn your experience in uh, building community in a startup ecosystem, venture ecosystem, a system of supporting individual entrepreneurs, individ uh, women business. So who we are, we are, have representatives of like various businesses, fashion, education, PR, IT, education again, um, uh, reasonable consumers for, of children, goods, and so on, uh, accounting. Uh, me, personally, I'm representative of Angel uh, Network in Belarus, so we do, so, in my opinion, what I do, what you do here is you matches startups and investors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can, this is kind of pitching event as we consider this. So we are glad to know a lot about how the community is building here, what kind of programs do you use to develop and support each other. Yes, we also need one million cup mm -hmm. because we are in a, we are developing rapidly, very fast. We do investing, we have great startups, and Belarus has big, great hardware, um, hardware startups, software startups, because nowadays it's kind of IT hub of Eastern Europe. So yeah, we are glad to be here, and thank you for the invitation once again. So any questions, we are here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to be leaving the information sheet about the guests in the program. So if anybody wants to see this, you know, grab it later, have a look, talk to them, share our experiences, and uh, again, welcome to all of you. Um, all right, with that, we are ready to start. 
So our first presenter is Michael Reagan, Relevate Systems. Michael presented, I believe, last week in Durham, or two weeks ago. Um, I, was, I was out on whenever you presented last, so at any rate. Michael, welcome, and we'll get started. Hi everybody, thanks for having me. So I'm gonna jump right in. Um, been working on this for a while, it's evolved a good bit since last time I was at One Million Cups. So if you've been, I see some people who are here before, so hopefully you'll see some differences. So um, the, first, let me tell you how real estate works because this is, a, this is a company in the residential real estate space. The way it works is that brokerage firms help agents to be more successful, at least that's the theory and the agents pay a part of their commission to the brokerage firm. So if you didn't know that's how it worked, now you know because that's gonna set up the rest of what we're gonna talk about today. Um, the problem for brokerages is that they're very good at teaching new agents. And when they're teaching new agents how to do real estate, they make, they make good money. Uh, they get anywhere from 50% to 30% of the commission from the agents, and the agents are happy to pay it because how else are they gonna learn how to do real estate? It's a very steep learning curve. So, the, the, it works great, they, they bring them up, think about the uh, real estate brokerage as a conveyor belt, where they're taking these new agents and they're bringing them from zero production up to maybe 10 or 12 sales. But the problem is when the broker, when the agent gets to 10 or 12 sales, all of a sudden they feel like they don't need the brokerage anymore. And in, in most part it's true. They've learned what the brokerage has to teach them, and then they have this conversation with the broker in charge that says, gosh, you know what, I really love you and I love everybody I work with, but I got a family to look out for too, so really, I don't really want to give you any more than 5% of my commission, and even that, I'm not really that excited about, so either I need you to cave in and give me a really good deal and maybe pay for part of my marketing and my rent, so basically you make no money on me anymore, or I'm leaving and I'm gonna to go to one of these discount brokerages that, and a lot of them are set up as multi-level marketing firms, and you might have heard of EXP, it's a big one in our market now, and they're being very successful with getting agents out of the full-service brokerages because they're only char they're charging a very little compared to what a full-service brokerage charges. And why is this? Is because the brokerage really has, has nothing of value to give to the 20% of agents that sell 90% of the real estate. You've heard of the 80-20 rule, and real estate is more like the 90-20 rule, the top 20% of agents sell 90% of the real estate. So obviously that's a problem for the brokerage. The problem for the agents is that when the agent gets to maybe five or six million in production, uh, which is maybe 20 houses a year, they get too busy to be able to handle that business. And so they're told that they need to start a team. That is, they need to start hiring people and training them and, and planning their vacations and and payroll and so forth, but most of these agents, they don't, they're not good at managing, and the last thing they wanna do is do that. So what is supposed to leverage them and help them grow their business and really be able to do well, uh, doesn't work very well, and when they start the team, they find, oh, I'm actually working harder, I'm taking home less money, I'm having a lot less fun. So we've got brokerages out there that aren't making any money on 90% of the home sales. We've got agents out there that when they get to be in this 20% where they're selling most of the homes, they're so busy they can't even enjoy their life, and the only solution out there doesn't work very well because when they try to start a team, their man the managerial time takes over and uses up all the time they thought they were gonna save, and they don't enjoy it at all. And so this is the situation we find ourselves in in residential real estate. So this is me, Mike Regan. I own a company called Hunter Row Real Estate. It's a brokerage in Raleigh. It's been around for 14 years. And I didn't get into real estate the way no, most agents do. I was a process improvement consultant. I wrote a couple of books and you can find them on Amazon still. I don't own them because I sold the company, but they're still out there. And so my take on real estate was a little different from most people. When I get into real estate, I, I became a pretty highly productive agent pretty quickly. And then I started noticing all the process improvement opportunities in real estate. And as a broker owner, I felt like the way that agents organize themselves to acquire and serve clients didn't really make a lot of sense. And that's the kind of thinking that doesn't happen in real estate very much. So we spent the last 10 years thinking about how to organize real estate agents in a much better way so that they can be a lot more productive and have much better lives. Um, so we did that. And then now we have agents that are super productive. They have amazing lives. 
And what's most important is they can't leave because if they leave, they lose this amazing productivity and amazing life because they can't get it anywhere else. So we thought that was pretty good. At first I did it for my own company so that we could just make money and not be on a hamster wheel, always recruiting and losing agents like everybody else. But then we thought, why don't we create another company that owns the intellectual property, the software, and the methods, and so we called that Relevate Systems. The idea being that we can license this and somehow make a lot of money on it going national with it. So that's what we're doing. So here's how it works for agents. Uh, let's see. Remember the graph we showed before of an agent that, that gets productive and then tries to start a team to try to have a life, and it just doesn't work very well for them? Well, this upper line right here is actually one of our agents. Her name's Ashley Gronwell. And she came to us and said, look, you know, I, I um, well, let me, I'll just show you the information first and we'll tell you the story. But what she did is she started with what we call the Relevate support team early in her career. And you can see, as opposed to the graph that's normal for most agents, she just smoothly grew and grew and grew her business. So that's what Relevate Systems does for agents. And that's what we're able to offer our agents so they're willing to pay us. So this is Ashley, and this is her baby, Ellie, and she's living a very good life right now, as you'll see in just a moment. So this is her, and she, she joined us straight from another company called Keller. Have you heard of Keller Williams? You heard of that? It's a pretty big real estate company, um, one of the biggest in the country. So she was rookie of the year at Keller Williams, and they said to her, okay, you're doing great. Now you gotta build a team. And she said, I don't wanna be a team leader. I wanna be a mom. So she came to us and said, listen, I've heard a little bit about your system, and I think it'd be great if I could make a ton of money and sell a lot of houses, but I don't want to work all the time. I want to be able to be home with my family. So we said, come on over and learn the process. So the year she had her baby, about four years after she joined us, um, she took 13 weeks off, and during those 13 weeks, she worked about an hour a day because the Relevate support team really helped her and enabled her to be able to take that time off. The rest of the weeks that year, she only worked 25 hours a week. And she, took, she sold 102 houses, which is a lot of houses for any real estate agent, and her take-home income after all expenses to her tax return was $425,000. As a firm, because we were able to do this for her, she paid us $128,000, which is about seven times more than almost any brokerage would make on an agent of that level of productivity. But it's a win-win, and isn't that what America's supposed to be, right? You think of a, a, new, a, new, a new and innovative idea, and everyone wins. It's not like we're trying to take the pie and make one slice smaller so another slice can be bigger, we're talking about making the pie bigger and everybody's piece gets bigger. And that's how it's supposed to work. Uh, another example, uh, oh, and she, she said this, she said, Relevate fulfilled every promise, most of, most of every day with my children and an amazing income. Another example, Adrian Zeraquist was with Remax. In her last full year with Remax, she joined us, she joined us in January of 2017. Two minutes left, okay. In 2000, 16, she took home $325,000 in 70 hours a week. So this is an individual agent working really hard. She didn't want to build a team either. Um, she, at the time, had a husband, a new husband, and a six-month-old baby, and she said, look, I want to keep making the money. I love real estate, but I'm not going to work 70 hours a week, and I'm not going to sacrifice my family, so I'll give up real estate if I have to, but I'd love if your system could work for me. So in 2018, she took home 362,000 to her tax return after all expenses in 28 hours a week. So Remax only charges 5%, it's called a 95-5 split. Remax in 2016 only earned about $20,000 from the value they gave her. For us, we have an 80-20 split, which means she gets 20% of the commission, so we earned $106,000 from her. So we have a lot of top producers that this really works well for. Rel uh, Hunter Real Estate's growing rapidly because of this system. Adrian said, I'll stay here as long as you'll have me. I feel like I'm stealing and getting so much value. She says, but don't, don't charge me more than 20%. Uh, but 20% but works great for us. So brokerages definitely need something that becomes more valuable and sticky as agents become more productive. Remember the conveyor belt we showed before? So that's what Relevate Systems does. As the agent gets more more productive, this gets more valuable to them. So why not grow forever, right? Why not take that first conveyor belt and add another one to it so the agents just can go from learning to really growing. So agents make more income and fewer hours, the brokerage provides a lot of value and gets paid for it. 
So the total addressable market, there are about 3,340 brokerages that have an average of 185 agents each. These are the biggest, the biggest brokerages in the United States. And each brokerage leader should be able to engage Relevate for 61 of their agents. About a third of the agents will, this will fit for. So here's the way it works implementation-wise. While the agents are still excited about the first kind of value they're getting, learning how to do real estate, they start to be able to benefit from what Relevate does. There's an overlap there where we can get them hooked on the next type of value. So they'll continue on this conveyor belt forever with these companies. So we charge 5% of the gross commission income, which the feedback we get says, hey, that's very fair for the brokerages being able to charge much more to their agents for the value. Um, the foundation phase, right now we're in the midst of implementing this in four different brokerages. The first two are already lined up. And this is what the income looks like in the, in the growth phase over the next four quarters. So I can go over this in more detail with anybody who's interested, but we start to make money right away with it. The idea of this foundation phase is just to prove out and fine tune the implementation strategy for this. And then we get into the growth phase. So uh, we already have two firms signed up. One has 240 agents and one has 900 agents. So these are, these are pretty big firms and they're excited about it and they're having this problem we talked about earlier and they see this as a solution. So the growth phase, we, wanna, we feel like we can get 500 of those 3,000 some brokerages in the next few years. And this is what the, the, the revenue growth would look like. So pretty exciting stuff. Uh, this is the budget for the foundation phase to do it right. A lot of what we'll do in the first four brokerage implementations obviously will be useful for implementing at all the other brokerages for the rest of time. And so we're raising two million in pre-seed funding right now for 15% of the equity of the company. We're looking for angel investors with vision to understand the opportunity. I just got back from Austin last night about 12.30 in the morning and met with two uh, investors that have done really successful things in the real estate industry. We've got a lot of interest there. Um, and uh, my request is to please introduce me to anyone who might be interested in investing. Now, if you have questions, I'll be glad to try to answer them. All right, we'll open it up to questions. So, so what would you say is the key factor to improve the productivity of all the agents and help the brokers to save that much money? It's considerable difference. <coughs> Randy, would you um, yeah, ask yeah, that sure. again, please? So we'll pass this around for everybody. Yeah, so. Great presentation, thank you. Uh, what would you say is the major uh, point, uh, the major advantage that you bring to these big brokerages that have been around forever? You know, the Remaxes, the Fondo Morrisseys, and all those guys. They have their own systems. How is your system different? Well, their systems don't work. I mean, the only systems they have is to train new agents. They have nothing for productive agents, and that's the problem. So it's not, it's, they just don't have anything. And so what we have is a, is a system that their agents can plug into, so they get all the leverage from building their own team without having to do it, and it's actually a lot less expensive than the agents building their own team. For instance, typically across the board, an agent that's extremely productive that has a team, they're only keeping, in the end, after all their expenses, 33% of their gross commission income. Our agents keep 60% after paying us our split and after paying the labor and everything else. So it's just a completely much more efficient system for agents to use. And we feel like it's going to change residential real estate because it just makes too much sense. Agents make too much money and the brokers just make too much. So compared to what it is now, which is bad. Could you give like one example of how it's different than what the big brokerages are doing? Well, the big brokers don't do anything to help their agents. So if an agent wants to leverage their time, then they have to build their own team. And they, they don't want to be managers. They stink at being managers. So, so if, a, if a brokerage uses Relevate, we provide this shared team that the agents can just plug into without having to hire, without having to fire, without having to come up with processes, without having to do vacations and payroll. They just plug in and it works. And because we have economies of scale, we can do it a lot less expensively than they could. They could ever, like every agent that builds their own team, they're building it only for themselves. We're building it for thousands of agents. Even at my company, when we, we have 25 agents, they're very, very productive agents. We don't even take less productive agents. So just with 25 agents, our cost structure is much less and the quality is much better. And think about this too, since we have a lot of team members, the agents can use as much or as little as they want 
So they can you, they can use five team members one day, and then the next day when they don't need them, zero. They only pay for what they use, and that's a huge advantage. It's just it's just a much better way to do it than has ever been seen before. So you're comparing literally nothing to a very efficient structure that agents can tap into. Okay, we have a question, Carol. Uh, I have a question. Uh, there is a um, existing way that just came out, you know, saying like most of the people, uh, the agents, talk about blockchain. You know, what I'm saying platform where there's a blockchain, where um, it has cut off, you know, like people like Helium and all that stuff that, you know, a platform which has just been sold, it's called Ideal, and it's for a a agents, I mean like real estate agents, and it's much quicker, much faster, and they make more money, way more money than that sometimes, you know what I'm saying, like, uh, which is, uh, if you've seen your competitors, who are your competitors who are doing the same thing they're doing? Because there's a, 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 a two blockchains which I know about the real estate of that. I, I don't think that there's, I'll look into it, I haven't heard of that company, but I don't see how blockchain is gonna help with this problem. To be honest with you, I know there's a lot of talk about blockchain, I think it's helpful in some ways, but I don't think it solves this problem we're talking about. It may solve a different problem, but it's not gonna solve this problem. I, I'd love to know what you're talking about so I can look at it, but I'm pretty aware of most of the innovations in real estate. And again, I, I'm pretty familiar with blockchain as well. I just don't know how blockchain provides the leverage that this does. I think blockchain is more of a transactional, higher security way of doing things, but I don't think it relates to this. All right, Frank. Yeah, so I wanna return to the first question. Sure. I, I think there might be some assumptions that you're making that we don't, we don't really know how real estate works. Sure. And so it sounds to me like what you're doing is you're, you're providing a back office solution so that they don't have to build a team. So like we don't, not being a real estate agent, that's I don't fair, have to That's a fair that description. What the team looks like when somebody has to build it. So I'm, I'm assuming like Keller Williams and Bob Morrissey, they're providing marketing support and that kind of stuff. But can you elaborate a little bit more about what your system and your software is actually gonna do? Agents um, make the most money per hour when they're generating leads. So the first thing we do when we implement this is we ask the agents to take their net income and divide that by the number of hours they're doing lead generation, and it's $500, $1,000, $1,500 an hour. Like Adrian, when she's generating leads, that means when she's reaching out to her sphere of influence and asking for business, she's making $1,500 an hour when she does that. So the idea is that the way an agent's gonna make a lot of money is spending more time doing that and less time doing everything else. And so in order to spend more time doing those revenue generating activities, they need to offload everything else. And they really just don't have a good way of doing that without building a team. And if they build a team, they spend more time managing and it doesn't help them. So what our system does, it provides highly trained people that they can, they can readily delegate everything else to besides lead generation so that they can spend more time doing the highly valuable things. And that's why you have agents that can make so much money in so little time, because they're focused on only the really high value added activities. Does that make sense? Our team, think about the agents are like doctors and our team is like the nurses. So when you go to the doctor, it's not like they're handing you off to a nurse. It's like the doctor and the nurse are a team and they just don't have that available to them by the big firms. And the big firms, I mean, these are franchise firms. They're, they're looking to sell franchises and they're not set up and they've never thought of providing this kind of, and, and, and they don't wanna have a bunch of employees either. Think about the real estate companies, they have a bunch of independent contractors. The last thing they want is to hire a bunch of employees and figure out how to manage them. They're just not set up to do that. So we, so we can provide that to them. Does that make more sense? Does that help? Um, you, you put up there on a few occasions on some of the slides about the 5% fee. Mm -hmm. Is the 5% fee separate for Relevate, or is it baked into the firm's share of the total split? Yeah, so the firm, that you so, so one of the implementations we're planning on doing in Wilmington, the idea there is they're gonna charge their agents 25%, and then five of that 25%, or 25% of the 20, 20% of the 25% goes to us. So the agent pays them 25%, they give five to us, and they keep 20. That's how it would work. And that 20% is a lot more than any company gets from productive agents. But they get, if they get them in using it early, the agent really grows quickly using it. And then 
they can't leave because where are they going to go to get that kind of support at that cost? They can't do it themselves. Uh, understood, and actually that kind of leads into where I was going with this. So would you say that this actually helps people get back into being in the real estate business and not in the agency business? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, agents get into, into real estate because they want to have freedom, right? They want to have, the, they want to feel like they have their own business and they want to be able to grow something and then have more freedom. But the way it is now that the bigger, the more business they do, the less freedom they have. So this is going to fulfill the promise that real estate made to agents when they first joined, which has not been fulfilled ever in the history of real estate. They can truly now have freedom and have a great business. And that doesn't exist in real estate right now. So to that point, um, what prevents a company coming along and creating that type of service and selling it to real estate agents? Like yeah. a back office, yeah, that's or a good even a, I don't even know, maybe even like a, I'm making this up, like a mobile app or something. I mean, runs of technology comes along or a system comes yeah. along. That's, that's a great question. So the, the coordination of the, the team members, we call them client service managers, to support the sales agents is a pretty complicated thing to do. I mean, I'm a process improvement expert, wrote books about it. It took us 10 years to figure it out. So I'm not saying that it could never be copied because it could be, anything could be copied, but it would take a lot of money and a lot of time to do it. And the, the, these big brokers is really not set up to do that kind of thing. Certainly they could hire people, but it would take time. It's similar to, let's say a woman is pregnant and you say, hey, what if we paid you $5 million and had five guys help you? Can we have that baby in five months instead of nine? That's a little bit of an analogy of what it is. I mean, some of it, you just, it just takes time to learn and figure out. And I think that, this, and this has been recognized by the big firms and the managers I've talked to, they, they'd rather purchase it or have some pay somebody else to do it than to try to invent it themselves, to get it to market sooner and have their agents, help their agents sooner. Again, anything can be copied, of course, but I think it's fairly sustainable because I think it's pretty hard to copy. It would take, it would take, a, it would take a good bit of time. I think that's, that's readily recognized. So Relevate presupposes the perpetuity of the current brokerage system. How do you deal with the disruptors like Open Door and people who are just trying to eliminate the whole concept of in-person reality and brokerages and, and all of the inefficiencies that exist within the current yeah, I, I get what you're saying. What you're saying with that, and that's obviously something we've kept, kept a really close eye on. I think Open Door is the best of the disruptors, and the issue with Open Door is that they, they, the amount of money it would take for them to own as much, because their key is to own the real estate, and to own as much real estate as it would take to make a really significant dent, it, it, it's ridiculous how much money it would it would take to do that. And and if they have one little bump in the economy owning all that real estate, they're going to have a lot of trouble. The other ones, um, the other ones that are out there, I don't see anything that's going to replace real estate agents right now. I know it's very fashionable to think that's going to happen any day now. And I talked to somebody yesterday that said, "Hey, look, all the information's out there. Why do they need a real estate agent?" Well, I mean, if you get accused of a crime and you might go to jail, that's a pretty serious thing, right? All the information's out there to defend yourself, right? It is. You can look up all the laws. You can watch YouTube videos about how to be a lawyer, but it's such an important thing, and you do it so seldom, hopefully you get accused of a crime very seldom, that, that you want somebody who's been there before to help you. And I think that's similar to real estate. Um, the, the, most people want an experienced person to bring perspective and experience when they buy or sell a home. There's gonna be some people that don't need that, and don't want that, but gosh, I mean, Every single person that uses any of our agents came to us by referral because they wanted somebody they could trust. And I don't think that's going to go away any more than criminal attorneys are gonna go away. And I know that there's, I know everybody feels like it's going to, but I just, I just don't think that's the way most human beings want to buy or sell a house. So we'll see. Obviously we'll see. All right, last, last question. So when you pitch Relevate to these brokerage firms, What's the biggest hurdle you have um, in convincing them that this is something that they want to implement, something that won't take over their internal systems? What, what sort of feedback do you get from them? I mean, the ones we've talked to so far have said, when can we start? Because they're really suffering. 
I mean, they're constantly losing agents. That, that conversation I talked about where they come and say, hey, I really love you, but that ulcer they get, they, they're in pain. And so when they see a potential way to solve it, they're really excited about it. And so uh, we've been talking to a number of them in, in, in a number of different cities. We've got seven in five different cities that want to start doing it. But for us, we're trying to eliminate the obstacles and increase our possibility for success. So we've got one here in Raleigh and one in Wilmington that we're going to start with because I feel like those leaders get it the best and will understand that there's going to be some bumps in the first implementations. Um, so what are the objections they might have? I guess the number one is like how many agents would it really apply to? And are there certain personality profiles that will do it and some that won't? Um, and I, I agree that not every agent's gonna be a good fit for this, so that's why we felt like maybe a third of agents. And they agreed that that makes sense, and they don't have any problem thinking, oh gosh, this would apply to Joe and Emily and Sarah, and they can make a list of agents that they said, wow, this will really help them. So I think as we get into it, obviously we're gonna run into some other issues, but the fact that it works well in, in our brokerage here helps a lot that it's not something that's just brand new. This is a well-tested methodology and software, but how well will it work in a different brokerage with a different culture, that's yet to be seen. I hope it works well. I know we're gonna have some bumps that we need to figure out. With that, unfortunately our time is up. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take just a little bit of a break to switch presentations. So, if anybody wants coffee refill, now would be the time, but make it quick.